If you've never studied the harpsichord before, you might assume that the technique needed to play it well is similar to that of the piano. That actually isn't the case, however. So today I'm going to be going step by step through the basics of harpsichord technique so that you can see how to play the harpsichord well. I'll also be putting out several videos in the future further detailing various elements of harpsichord technique, so subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning more about how to play the harpsichord. Let's begin. <laughs> The way you sit at the harpsichord and approach the instrument is quite a bit like how you sit at the piano. You sit with a straight back, with your head resting on top of your shoulders but relaxed, a relaxed neck, as if a marionette string was being pulled up on you from the back of your head. You should be a fair distance away from the keyboard, not too close, but not too far away. Uh, on a double manual harpsichord, you want to make sure that you can reach the upper keys, so that's a little bit different than the piano. Your forearms, when you're playing, should be about parallel with the ground. About parallel with the ground, like this. And some treatises say that you should turn your body slightly, so that one side of you is slightly closer to the harpsichord than the other. But this is not universal advice, and I personally don't play that way. To get a good sound out of the harpsichord, you need total body relaxation, including in the legs, in the neck, in the jaw, anywhere that you could think of. This is especially true for the arms. If someone were to come up behind you while you were playing the harpsichord well, you would be so relaxed in the arms that they could move them like this, and you could still play. You wouldn't be holding any tension in any positions like this. One easy way to remember that is to just call them chicken arms, like chicken wings. They need to be fully relaxed. Of course, this also includes finger tension. So when moving around the harpsichord, especially in doing leaps, you would never want to hold your thumb out in a stuck position, nor would you want to raise your pinky during any passage work. For hand position, some treatises talk about the hand being like a cat's paw, so that the fingers are curled under slightly and not sprawled out. The best way to find this position is if you drop your arm and relax your hand, and drop it by your side so that it's totally relaxed, and then if you raise up your hand and keep that position, that is a good position for playing on the harpsichord. See how the fingers are slightly curled under and not spread out like this, or even like that. This would be a closed hand position where the fingers are close together. This makes for the best sound on the harpsichord because it facilitates relaxation. In harpsichord playing, you use minimal motion, or you can also call it economy of motion. So you only use the fingers unless the wrist is needed, and then you only use the wrist and the fingers unless the arm is needed. To make sound on the harpsichord, you don't actually strike the keys. You rest your hands on the keys, and then you release your weight, letting gravity do the work. In order to do this and not have the harpsichord speak late or not at all, you have to play in a way that's called on the strings, where you actually have your hands resting on the strings so that the keys are slightly depressed before you play, so that you can feel the place where the plectrum touches the string but hasn't plucked it yet, so it's on the string, and that is when you release your weight. So I'm finding the plucking point. I'm releasing my weight. In order to move from one position to another on the harpsichord, you move from left to right, close to the keys, instead of making any sort of large arc to change positions. This sideways motion facilitates fingerings on the harpsichord that create articulation naturally. I'll discuss harpsichord fingerings in detail in another video because that's a large subject, so subscribe if you would like to know when that video comes out. A great example of this sideways motion is a 3-4-3-4 scale where you use just the third and the fourth finger repeatedly, which is a common fingering in early harpsichord repertoire. And then 3-2, all the way back down. I'll play that again. Notice how I'm moving this way instead of too much twisting of the wrist. To make 
a leap on the harpsichord. You have to relax downward into the key after it's played, and then curl your finger inward toward the hand to release, and then move sideways to the position where you're going. You don't strike the key and pick up, or you get too short a sound, or you get too much of a chiff in the sound. Instead, you, as you relax downward, you'll hear the difference in the sound. Versus. In my opinion, this is one of the most counterintuitive parts of coming to the harpsichord if you have a piano background, and one of the hardest to master, because it requires trust and a lot of practice to know that you'll end up in the right place if you can't prepare where your jump is going. Those are all the basic elements of harpsichord technique that I would like to discuss in this video. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be putting out several videos in the future digging much deeper into various elements of harpsichord technique. So if you're interested in looking at those and learning more about how to play the harpsichord, please subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell so that you get a notification when those videos come out. And if you found the information in this video useful, please give it a like and leave me a comment below with any questions you may have. Thanks so much for watching.